Corel has a vast repository of all sorts of vector clip art that can be used in a variety of graphic design projects. But you're not limited to using a clip art image in its original form only. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to customize clip art by changing object properties, editing nodes, and adding and removing elements. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. To start exploring clip art, open the Connect Content Inspector. You may just see the few items that came in the starter pack, but clicking the Get More icon opens Corel's content packs. The image packs, such as Earth and Nature or Transportation, contain either raster images or vector images, or a combination. Open one of the free ones and download and install, which will quickly create and populate new categories in the inspector. In my example, after installing the Modern Life Pack, I now have a long list of categories I can peruse, such as Special Occasions. Each of these objects is a small CDR file, and I can hover over any object to see where the file is stored in my computer. I can display only vector clip art by disabling the raster images icon. In addition to CDR format, other vector clip art formats can be imported as well, such as EPS, WMP, or SVG, just to name a few. Even in a vast collection of vector clip art, you may not find exactly what you're looking for. However, it's a lot easier to start with clip art that can be customized rather than build vector art from scratch. For my first example, I have a file that contains a sale banner that I'd like to embellish with a gift box. In a separate file, I have a collection of vector birthday icons. I'll select this box, copy it, and return to my banner file where I'll paste in the box. Now I can resize and move it into place. In the object inspector, the gift box is a group, which I could rename. Opening the group shows the list of curves it contains. I could ungroup and edit curves, but I'll keep the group intact and edit the objects within. The colors of the box aren't right for this banner, so I'll start making some changes. First, I'll select the lid of the box. With the pick tool, I can select an object inside a group by holding the command key while clicking. Now I'll open the properties inspector, click the fill tab, switch to fountain fill, and use two shades of red to fit with the red of the text. The box below the lid is a group comprised of 84 objects, but one simple rectangle is all I want. With the group selected, I'll trace it by pressing Shift and double-clicking the Rectangle tool. Now I can use the Attributes eyedropper to copy the properties from the lid. This rectangle was added outside the group, so in the Objects Inspector, I'll drag it just above the original box group. Now I can delete that original group. Next, I'll change the bow. And here it's easier to use the Objects Inspector to command select all of the green objects. I'll change the fill to fountain here as well, using a gold gradient. The ribbon could use another end section, so I'll command select the current end shape, use command C and command V to copy and paste, then move and rotate. This new curve is outside the gift box group, so I'll drag it inside, just below the oval at the center of the bow. In order to save this gift box as clip art to use in future files, I can save it alone as a CDR file. I'll select it, choose File, Save As, and check Save Only Selected Elements. I could save the file to the Special Occasions folder that came with my content download, or I can save it to a folder I've set up for my customized clip art. Now here's another file where I'd like to use the gift box clip art I just saved. In the Connect Content Browser, I'll open the list of content sources and choose Add New at the bottom. I'll click Create Alias, browse to my clip art folder, and select that folder. Now my clip art folder appears in the list of categories, and I can drag in what's inside. For a second example, I want to add one more object to complete this set of sticker graphics that I'll be using to create stationery for a baby shower. In the Connect Content Inspector, I'll open the Baby and Kids category and bring in this duck. Unlike the gift box in the previous example, this clip art has a white background. So I'll command click this rectangle and press delete. I can also shift command click all of the bubble inner circles and delete them, then do the same for the larger bubble circles. I need to make some changes to this duck, 
so that it has the same shadowed white outlines found in the other images. In the Object Inspector, I'll open the group and select the base curves for the body and beak and use Weld to make them into one filled curve. Now I'll use the Properties Inspector and the Outline tab to create a four point outline and color it white. I'll remove this light yellow curve, and for the curve of the wing, I'll select it and right click the white swatch to set its outline. Instead of a closed filled curve, I want to make this a thick open curve. So I'll switch to the Shape tool, select and delete segments, then double click to add some new nodes, which I'll move around to get a more wavy curve. With the Pick tool active, I can increase the outline thickness. This duck can use some raindrops and I have a nice set of drops in this weather collection that I'm opening. I'll command click to select the group of drops and command click once more to select just one drop. I'll copy and paste and move the drop over to the duck. I'll open the group that comprises the drop, select its base curve and give it a thick white outline to match. Then I'll make two more copies of the entire group, make a group of the three drops, and move the group inside the duck group. Finally, to add a drop shadow to match that of the other objects, I'll activate the shadow tool, click and drag to shadow the entire group, remove any feathering, and reduce the shadow opacity. Now my duck sticker looks rather consistent with the other stickers. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on customizing clip art in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.